Good afternoon, it's Penny Well, the Black Pen. Just want to make a quick video on succession planning. One of the things that uh, parliamentarians, and in particular the ANC, seem to really, 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 really struggle with. This thing of succession planning and making sure that at the right time, you hand over to the next generation. We've got these old politicians, especially on the African continent, who just don't want to let go. You also look at someone like Joe Biden. Mkulu, wase America. Onga fu nukte deli ingane inganu ti ipate. Guys, whenever I criticize the ANC, whenever I criticize government, whenever I criticize maybe struggling black people, I always try to bring it back to myself. How am I doing better than them in, in my life? Am I doing better than them or am I just a hypocrite? Pointing at other people. Meanwhile, in my own life, I'm struggling. When you look at the ANC and you look at how they are leading and governing, are you doing a better job in your family, in your household? Or are you just as useless and as corrupt as the ANC government? So, in effect, if ever you were allowed to run the country, you would do the exact same job. So the same thing applies with succession planning. And I've studied a lot of really wealthy families, not just locally, but overseas and obviously historically as well looking at how they've managed to keep their wealth in the family for over two three generations a lot of people who are self-made their wealth lasts one to two generations and that's it and it's because they have very very weak succession planning i have a plan for myself and my kids and i think outside of my plan it's just something for you guys to think about if you have property maybe it's the house you live in Maybe you've managed to buy rental property. Maybe you have shares. Maybe you have a business or some other assets that you own. What is your plan with your children? Are you planning to one day pass away and leave them this fat life insurance, 5 million rand, 10 million rand, written in your beautiful will and they get to inherit the cars and your nice house, etc. It's a beautiful thing. I think a lot of people are striving for that. They want to leave their children beautiful trust funds, a trust fund baby. But how do you know that your children won't snort away your wealth? How do you know your children won't date or marry the wrong people who will come and steal what you've sweated and, and, and bled your whole life for? And this is where succession planning is very, very important. Succession planning is not just about passing on the baton when the time is right or when you're old. Succession planning is making sure that the next generation, normally the younger generation, is fully capable of taking over from you and where possible is even better than you in whatever you're leaving them with. For me in particular, my plan with my children is to make sure that everything that I own, whether it is property, whether it is land, whether it is a farm, whether it is a business, whether it is vehicles, whether it is shares or any other asset, it could be online assets, access to my YouTube channel as an example. I want to make sure that they understand that their father has worked really, really hard for this. They want to understand that they have to understand that their father was also privileged because of the work their grandmother did. My mother grew up in Vugeni. In Wazulu. In South Africa, of course. And then she met my father and then they moved to Emadadeni Township in Newcastle. My mother studied to be a teacher there and then from there she taught for basically her whole life. She was a head of department in HOD at some point, and then she was a deputy principal at another point as well. And she afforded us, myself and my two siblings, Upensi and Penrose, afforded us to go to decent Model C schools. We took it upon ourselves to make sure that we were good students, and then from there we went to tertiary. I went to Rhodes University and to the University of Johannesburg. My brother went to Rhodes University. My sister went to the University of Johannesburg, where she is currently doing her master's. She allowed us those privileges and I appreciate them every single day. She used to wake up and go and fetch water from the river. She used to go and fetch firewood. That was the life she lived, a rural life. And we managed to just taste a little bit of township life, but mostly live suburban. But I need to understand what she sacrificed and how much work she put in so that now that I've got this platform, I must build on that platform. And everything that she has accumulated and built and created for us, whether it is property, whether it is money, I need to make sure that I earn it. And for me, my, my plan and my hope is to buy those things from my mother. 
I need to buy them, whether it is me working for her, whether it is me working for myself, but I need to buy them so that I understand the pain and the strain, the blood and the sweat and the tears of acquiring those things. It may be that she passes on and we inherit those things, beautiful, but I want to know that I've earned them. So for my kids, I want my children from as young as possible to understand that we have to buy whatever our dad owns. They can obviously buy it easily. One of my kids can become a YouTube sensation. One can become an amazing singer. One can maybe be a genius and get a really, really great job. And they can take that money and then they can buy up whatever I have. It may not even be worth much, but at least they would have earned it. And they're not just inheriting it purely because they were born from me. Ideally, what I wish is I want my children to work for me. I did not give birth to children so that they go and draft CVs and go and beg strangers for jobs. I wanted them to work for me and to build on the legacy that I've created and that I've inherited from my mother as well. So that they can understand what it takes to run this. If we can pull something really big and special, my grandkids, their children, from a really, really young age must begin working in those companies. Understand the history of those companies and over the years how they've been built. So that by the time they need to take over, they are well versed. They understand the sacrifices, the work put in. Very, very, very important. And I think that's something that you guys need to consider. For me, when my children turn 15, 20, I'm happy to hand over. It doesn't matter how old I am. As long as they are competent and capable and can run the ship as good as me, if not better. That's my plan. This concept of leaving kids life insurance and a lot of assets and wealth, where they go and buy flashy cars and they snort cocaine and they go to Dubai and they live a soft life is what's going to ensure that they don't pass on anything moving forward because they don't understand the pain and the work that's needed to make sure they maintain what they have. Succession planning. The ANC government going back to there now. Who have they groomed to take over? Who are the young people that they trust, that we are meant to trust, that are going to take over the country? Why have they not taken a step back and let young people lead? What's happening in the country is that young people have to forcefully fight to lead. And it's obviously one way. It's one way. It's one way. True leadership is not given. It's taken. But why have they not created a conducive platform? I look at white Afrikaners. Christo Visa has now got the next generation that sits on his boards. Yanni Muton of PSG has got the younger generation sitting on his boards. I look at the Jewish community where a lot of them, they step back later and they let the children run the companies. I look at the Indians. A lot of you have seen some of the Indians, their children from a young age during school holidays after school. They go to their family's businesses and they go work there. They work at the till. They learn to liaise with employees. They speak to customers. They go and they deal with wholesalers. They understand the business. They go and they do banking. What are we doing? And you don't need to have a lot, but in your little property, it could be worth 800,000 rand. With your little car that you have, are you teaching your child the value of what your parents have? Do you make them understand that this car was bought from sweat and get that child to begin paying you for that car that you let them drive? That property they live in, get them to begin paying rent for the room that they're in. Get them to maybe begin buying the property back slowly. Whether it's 500 rand, 200 rand a month, get them to begin buying those assets from you. Use that money that they're giving you. Either enjoy it or make sure that you use it to buy other assets so that when they, when you die, when they take over your house, you can say, the money you gave me for this house, I've gone and bought another one or two other properties. And you can have them because you've proven that you can be trusted in taking care of assets for this family moving forward. Some of the families that I admire have got trust funds. And in those trust funds, all their children are employees. They work hard for the family and they paid for the work that they do. They earn some dividends, of course, at the end of the year. But the ones that make the most money are the ones that run the companies in those trust funds. That makes sure that you earn. And in those families, one of my mentors has told me that I work for the family. This is not my business. This is not my wealth. We make millions of rands every single month, but this is not for me. I work hard so I can build this into something bigger so that the next generation has got a bigger trust fund to, to take from. And I have to make sure that I groom the next generation to understand how these things work. It's a responsibility to the family and to future generations. It's not that my dad left me a hundred million, therefore I must live a soft life. That's how you guys lose it. And that's where people like myself and other young people who are hungry, who are willing to work hard, they come and they make sure that what was meant to be second generation wealth is chowed by us. 
When you compare us to the Ruperts and the Visas and the Oppenheimers of the future, we will come and we will steal their wealth because they are not groomed well enough to take care of that wealth and to grow it. Unfortunately, those are bad examples because those families have got great plans. Something for you guys to think about. Succession planning and how you guys are implementing something like that in your families for the benefits of yourself in your older age, for the benefits of your children so they're not entitled, for the benefits of your grandchildren and for future generations. Pen you all the black pen.